Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10 a.m. to 1030 a.m. session of the 2023 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are proud to introduce the presentation, Kintsugi Contemplative Pathways for the Wounded Healer. Our panel is not really a panel. It's my, my uh, wonderful uh, cohorts in crime, Andy Stricker, Spinoza Quinell, myself, Cynthia Colloin, uh, Lear Lobo, Francisca Yanukura, who is Frankie Antonelli, and JJ Jacobson, whose JJ Drinkwater was not able to be with us today. Andy Stricker is our mastermind and visionary behind Virtual Harmony. He's an innovation leader with Air University. Me, I'm a professor at CTU Doctoral Studies. I also teach at five universities, and I'm co-chair of the OSCC Organizing Committee. Frankie leads a visionary team of innovators at the University of Central Florida, and she specializes in emerging technologies for education. And JJ is our science fiction librarian and also a professional librarian, and his research is in interactive, immersive, and improvisatory narrative in virtual environments. Please check out the website at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. This session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC23. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the session. Andy, it's over to you. Oh, great. Uh, th thanks, Lear. Always an honor to be here and participate in this wonderful conference. So thank you so very much. Um, about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer, perhaps, uh, we wanted to create a, a region called Sacrojima. And actually, it's an, it's a location um, off the south um, uh, western part of Japan. And it was a, an independent island, but it eruption of the actual Sacrojima volcano uh, connected uh, the main island of Japan with the peninsula. And so we wanted to sort of, in a whimsical way, recreate uh, Sacrojima as a place for reflection, contemplation, and renewal as part of our work with Virtual Harmony. And so we landed upon this really cool um, Japanese um, um, Kind of artistic way of taking pottery that had unfortunately fell and broke <laughs> in various pieces and you know sometimes these were family heirlooms they've been in you know in families for generations and there is this form where called kintsugi where they take uh, broken pottery and they use this liqueur that's mixed with powdered gold and basically put the pieces back together again and we, we just thought it was a wonderful metaphor uh, for the issues that we try to pay attention to in virtual harmony where, you know, we encourage people who have been through, you know, hard experiences in life to come to virtual harmony and through community and shared activities go through, uh, you know, a, a shared healing process. Next slide, please. And so one of the things that... Um, you know, we're as we as the longer we live, <laughs> and we're starting to get up there. I'll speak for myself. Uh, is that uh, you know when you have painful experiences and wounds in life, uh, what you know you refer to as cracks and scars and so forth. Uh, no one ever really wants to have those experiences, and but the mystery of of life is that um, when when you have gone through some of these hardships and you encounter others. Who have been through similar hardships, um, you're able to have empathy. You're able to, um, you know, connect with them, and um, it's a really kind of a cool thing to experience in your life when you think, you know, you've been really severely damaged, um, but then you find out that um, those those, you know, hurtful, damaging experiences can actually be turned uh, for use in helping others. Next slide, please. So, so this is where um, we get to this, you know, this insight 
that, uh, and we didn't come up with this, by the way, I'm going to speak about an individual who's had an impact in our lives uh, in, in very uh, special ways uh, here in a minute. But we get to this place where we, um, you know, have these stories in our in our in our life experiences and oftentimes maybe it's at a coffee shop that's why we have a kintsugi uh teacup here the display is you know when you're sitting and visiting with someone who's been through hard times and you start sharing the things and experiences you've been through that's been difficult um, there is a special connection that can take place and so part of what we try to do is we try to you know emphasize that um you know there is a kind of like a, a maybe a shared healing process that occurs and what uh, Lear is helping me with with keeping up the pace here is she's moved on to the next slide and this this particular slide uh shows uh one of the uh, people that's influenced us and it's henry now and he's a scholar uh, he has passed on now, but uh, he made a big impact uh, in our lives, but he's the author of The Wounded Healer. And his, interesting enough, in his work over the years, he talks about Kintsugi as a metaphor for, you know, the brokenness that we can go through. So um, he, uh, 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 we've taken a lot of his writings and some of his reflections. I, I've taken a lot of notes. Uh, I happen to be at Yale when he was there. And um, so, um, you know, we've taken a, a lot of uh, the thoughts that he had to share from his own life experiences of being a, a so-called wounded healer and how important it was as, you know, in, particularly in the professions, you know, whether you're in the uh, counseling profession or other professions in medical practice, a lot of your uh, effectiveness can come from you're sharing that you have similar concerns or fears or experiences that you've been through. And Frankie, I, I, I thought I opened this up if you have some thoughts because uh, Frankie inspires us uh, with the cross-cultural connections and, and that's what we try to do with Sacrojima. You're too kind, um, uh, Andy. Yeah, um, I think as, as we go through life, um, you know, uh, um, and especially that societal uh, pandemic thing that we just went through really, um, you know, help us uh, shape everyday our lives in a in a so um, thoughtful but yet challenging but yet happy and all these things. And when we were talking about uh, Henry, um, and uh, I had to watch this BBC uh, little segment, short segment on Kintsugi, it just kind of clicked for me how um you know these two the western and the eastern world uh the, the concepts for each uh came together so beautiful the way you you just explain um and uh you know it's think going forward whenever uh we are together in sakujima and just outside in the physical world um i find these very helpful concepts and, and principles to abide by and and, and celebrate you know, every moment, the moment that we're together, the moments that we are out here in the physical world, in our own spaces. It's just, um, I just found, um, you know, our, our uh, concept here today that we're sharing uh, very, uh, like my compass, compass as, as I grow older. And I'm there with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to feel it. You know, Frankie, you brought yeah. up an important point. I, mm. I don't think any of us were not affected by COVID, right? The mm. pandemic had such an impact on everyone's lives. It's not any individuals at all. And mm. for us, we spent a lot of time in the research. We've been together for 15 years researching and designing. Andy didn't tell you, but we have probably over 18 grids of content of research games and simulations and ways of thinking. And of course, uh, many of you know, we've been involved with the space program and thinking about how life on Mars, how will we live? How will we tackle complex problems? Well, it's very hard to redirect our energies to those very purposeful investigations when our spirits are down, right? And so we took a little time and we built simulations, Andy in particular, I, I say we, right? He does all the heavy lifting and I go around testing everything and say, Andy, that doesn't work. 
work or Andy that doesn't support human computer and behavior <laughs> or I Andy I don't have history. permissions I got to change things <laughs> <laughs> and so we we think about collaboration we think about the triumph of the spirit we think and Clifford asks us the question what's the expectation of this and it's an interesting little simulation. You go around and you touch the different stations, you interact with the pottery, you break it, <laughs> and then you have to figure out how to put it back together. And and what kind of triumph of the spirit is that? You know, how do you feel about these, these uh, interactions? We are going to lead a tour on this uh, next Friday. I scheduled it for Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time for anyone who wants to join us in Zoom first so we can talk about the design and how it works right yeah. the uh, the craft that we put into it and then of course we'll go over to virtual harmony which is our research grid um, and we'll go to sakurajima the grid that has this uh, simulation on it and we'll experience it and on this current slide you'll notice there's five key points and we've been anchoring with them we took the sakurajima grid and last year andy created a vr implementation of it and if you've ever taken your virtual world content and transformed it into a unity based vr application and hosted it on meta for for beta testing you haven't lived until you've done that because that's not a trivial thing to do <laughs> And Andy spent a lot of hours working through the tech and, of course, the rest of us for, for testing it, for making uh, recommendations, for supporting persons in, in wheelchairs and people people who want to be seated while in VR so they're not taking a dive. You know, take, I call it taking a header because I was playing ping pong one day in 11 and I, I dived for the ball because I used to be a table tennis champion with 49 uh, tournament wins. And next thing you know, I'm in the air and there's nothing underneath me, no table. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the problem with VR. Whereas in the virtual world, I don't have to worry about breaking my body or, or the living room, you know. <laughs> And of course, can enjoy these spaces in such a tremendous way. Andy, back to you oh, on great. the uh, yeah. on these five principles. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know, the Ikigai uh, is a wonderful uh, set of principles for um, contemplative lifestyle and uh, figuring out how to live in better, harmonious ways with nature and with others. And 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 like Lear highlighted, we did a an Oculus app that um, helps to instruct on the, what these principles involve, and we wanted to represent them in, in the open sim uh, environment. So a lot of the models, the 3D models, are uh, across both of those uh, applications. Next slide, please, Sin. So here's a, here's a kind of a um, uh, um, overview of the, of the region when it comes into focus you'll see it but we we basically have uh, a, a feudal japanese village and um, there's a lot of little highlights the shinghaga studio is worth a visit uh, to see about the japanese art uh, artistic form of um, uh, painting uh, we have um, uh, a biota temple um, and we have several uh, really interesting places to visit to highlight the uh, the Japanese culture at different historical points. And there's uh, 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 so a, a shrine area that between the village and the activity, the Kintsuki uh, activity. And what we've done is we've put it into uh, three pathways. If we want to go to the next slide, uh, Lear, that'd be great. So here's a view of um, an aerial view of the pathway. So you start off uh, at the um, first station. Uh, and, and so what we've done is we, we have the activity as Lear highlighted where the particular Japanese pottery sh shatters. And then uh, you have you engage in a contemplative activity. And, and when you finish that, then the uh, shattered pottery pieces come back together again and form a beautiful Kintsuki uh, version of what has been broken and then it's given into your inventory. So as going through the inventory, you actually collect uh, five pieces of Japanese pottery. 
<laughs> so that's part part of uh, uh, the nice thing about doing it too. Uh, so you can you can go in this upper terrace pathway, and and what's nice is it's designed so that you can explore. Uh, through these various pathways, and in 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 the uh, background is the uh, Sakurajima volcano. It's actually a 3D model of the actual real volcano uh, from Japan, and so you get a very scenic view of um, uh, the uh, the areas you're doing this activity. And then we have a waterfall pathway, and you can uh, you know go along and and see a couple of waterfalls. They're very uh, um, contemplative uh, environments to pause and, and think about what uh, you're learning about Henry Nowen's work about wounded healers. And you work your way up uh, basically through the five stations and then you end up at the Wellsprings Onsen where if you're doing this as a group or with others, you can have some time to sit there and talk about your insights and thoughts as you went through uh, the various stations. Next slide, please, Sin. And here's a depiction of what a typical station looks like. And so you got activities in this Frankie highlighted. You can actually see this really wonderful Japanese uh, video about um, what is involved with Kanzuki. It's um, and you can then um, you know record your responses uh, to the the reflection activity. And there's an example of one of the potter uh, pieces of Japanese pottery that gets. Uh, shattered and then reassembled. <laughs> Next slide, please, Sin. So here's some quick snapshots uh, in, a, in a minute or two that we have. You sort of get a sense of what um, it looks like if you would come out. We'd love to have you come out and visit. Um, yeah, there's there's quite a few effects with uh, butterflies and so forth. So, you know, it's worth experimenting, setting um, the different, uh, you know, environmental um, settings that you prefer. I, I prefer to do it at night. Uh, there's a lot of nice lighting effects um, uh, so that as you go along the different pathways, there's a, a really wonderful garden that you start out with. And from this garden scene in the lower left snapshot, you can go to any pathway and, and work your way around uh, until you get to the, uh, the wellsprings. Next slide, please. And this is another set of, of snapshots. And you know, what we did with the bridges, we, we, we followed uh, the Japanese architecture for bridges. Uh, so we were trying to be as, as authentic as we knew to be in the recreation of the structures. So you get a sense of these very uh, beautiful uh, places that you can actually go to in Japan and see. And we want to wrap up with this quote from Henry now. And he says, I am a wounded healer. When we dismiss people out of hand because of their apparent woundedness, we stunt their lives by ignoring their gifts, which are often buried in their wounds. The compassionate life is the life in which we believe that strength is hidden in weakness and the true community is a fellowship of the weak. And, and this is a, a very key uh, wisdom insight that I have uh, sort of backed up into in my life at this point. I, I, I started out in life thinking that it was all about strength. Uh, and as I as I live longer, I realize it's more about weakness and sharing your weakness with others actually builds strength and community. So, Frankie and Lear, do you have uh, thoughts before we open up for questions? No, you well, summarized it very well. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Say that again, Frankie. I couldn't quite hear you. What was that? Oh, oh no, that he, uh, you know, summarized that so very beautifully. I, I did. Say it any better. Now he created this region originally to help you get in touch with your roots, didn't he? Did you want to talk about yes. that? Well, you know that's that's what we were doing with, um, you know, trying to, and we we have a lot of this represented across almost all of our grids. You know where, we, you know, we teach the STEM areas in our learning activities, but a lot of our focus is on this trans transcendental. Uh, viewpoint about life that we we can transcend our difficulties, our hardships, 
uh, in ways that uh, help us to be better in, in with ourselves and with others in lives and our in our community. So questions. Uh, Did you see there were two yeah. questions? Oh, One was okay. from Clifford on our expectation from this and yeah. from Julieta Surreal yeah. Dreaming. She says, do you work with Sharon, the um, the wounded healer? No, I don't. I love to learn more about that. Uh, uh, there's there's several um, expressions of the of the practice of being a wounded healer and i'm just beginning to learn about some of them you know from my explorations of this the the only person i've had direct uh, um, ways of helping to shape my early thoughts about wounded uh, healing is from henry now and but uh, but i know that across many cultures actually there's expressions of wounded healers that um, offer very distinctive and unique perspectives. Well, thank you, Andy, and thank you, Frankie, for such a fantastic session. As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out the conference.opencenter.org to see what is coming up next on the conference schedule. Our next session is The Word at 10.30 a.m. in this keynote region. We also encourage you to visit the OSCC 23 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with our sponsor, and our crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC regions. Thank you again, Team Virtual Harmony, and to you, the audience.